journey together in Holy Week. We're now on Thursday. And in the church, we call this Monday Thursday. And it's a busy day for us in the old parish because at lunchtime we have a service in the church, which is followed, of course, by lunch in the hall afterwards. And then we have our service in the evening where we come back to the church and we share in the sacrament of communion. And we do these because on this day, this is when Jesus instituted the Last Supper, the Last Supper that he shared with his disciples while he was here on earth. And we also remember today that at that supper, he, after dinner, took a basin and a towel and he washed his disciples' feet. And he did that because he became a servant to them to teach them that we too should be servants of one another. In these worrying times, let us be servants of one another and let's take time to worship God. Be still, for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One, is here. come to God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, on this day when we remember what happened in that upper room, we remember when you washed your disciples' feet and we remember that you shared your last meal with them. We come to you now, Lord, with our feet, with our feet that are dirty from the paths that we have trodden, but we also come with our hearts hungry for you. Our feet might be dirty because we've made wrong choices. Our feet might be dirty because we've not given time or energy to those who need our love. Our feet might be dirty from the ways of the world where illness rages and your people suffer. But today our hearts are also hungry for you, hungry for the assurance of knowing that we are loved, for the belief that there is a purpose in life. And so, Lord, we need your peace your strength and your joy. So come to us today, Lord. Wash us, feed us with your love. Unite us in Christ and give us hope for the world. Amen. I want to share with you that passage from the Gospel according to John. It's John chapter 13 and it's the one that we always share on Monday, Thursday. It's entitled, Jesus Washes His Disciples' Feet. 
It was just before the Passover feast. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he now showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was being served, and the devil had already prompted Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath needs only to wash his feet. His whole body is clean and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. I wonder what picture you have in your mind's eye as you read that passage or think about that passage. I always imagine if there were 13 people at the table for dinner, there would be a lot of noise. If you've ever been out for dinner with another 12 people and yourself, there's usually one conversation going on at one end of the table and another conversation going on at the other end of the table. But what happens when the food comes? What happens when dinner is served? People stop talking, don't they? People stop talking and they concentrate then on the eating. Now that passage says that it was while they were eating the meal that Jesus got up from the table. And so the picture that I have in my mind's eye of that event is Jesus getting up from the table, walking round and getting underneath the table to wash their feet. And the disciples stopping eating and looking across the table at each other and thinking, oh my goodness, what is going on here? Let me ask you a question. What do you think of your feet? Have you got nice feet? I don't think I've got particularly nice feet. Too many years of wearing shoes that probably didn't fit me very well but looked quite nice have left me with not very nice feet. How would you feel about somebody washing your feet? When we do the Easter code with the children in the primary school, we give them the option, if they wish, of having their feet washed. And even kids are quite reluctant to take off their socks and their shoes and let anybody wash their feet. And I can bet that their feet will be an awful lot nicer than mine. There are so many symbols in this act of Jesus as he washes his disciples' feet. But one of them surely is that if he can stoop himself so low as to wash people's feet, warts and all, and you know what feet, feet are like, they can have more than warts in their feet. If he can stoop so low as to do that, then what does it say about his love for us? We all have things that we're not proud of. Maybe we're not proud of our feet, but we also have things that we're not particularly proud of. And yet Jesus comes to all of us. And he washes our feet. 
Sometimes I wonder if we've got too high a picture of God, where we think that God's away up in the heavens and he's somehow apart from the rest of his people. But sometimes I also think we've got too low an opinion of ourselves. As we walk this week together and we think about Jesus on his journey to the cross, think about your feet. Think about your feet, warts and all, and Jesus bending down to tend to them. Think about ourselves, warts and all, that Jesus reaches out to us in love. And if he can reach out to each and every one of us in love, then can we be ready to accept that love that he has to offer? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we remember today that you were broken not only for us, not only for many, but that you were broken for all. And we remember that when you washed your disciples' feet, you were telling them to be servants of one another. And so we rejoice that your love is not just for the select few, not just for the saints of the church, but that your love is for everyone. And so we come to you now in confidence, Lord, to pray for the world in all its need. We pray today for those who long for wholeness. We pray especially for those who are in physical pain, who are sick, who suffer from diseases, who watch over loved ones. We remember before you people who feel empty and they long for the opportunity to be at peace with you, at peace with their neighbour and at peace with themselves. Lord Jesus, you were broken for all, so reach out now to your broken world and teach us to reach out in turn. Show us where you would have us serve, teach us what you would have us do, and use us to fulfil your purposes. May your grace bring hope, may your love bring healing. Amen. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. now to God who blesses us beyond our imagining, who loves us beyond our dreaming, who forgives us beyond our deserving, and who uses us beyond our hoping, be praise and thanksgiving, honour and adoration, now and always, 
And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen.